is like sucking all the, because of its gravitational pull. Uh, can you go to the next? Because of the gravitational pull, so it says that you are going to you are going to have to go through me first. Jupiter is saying to the rocks, you have to go through me first before you go and hit Earth, right? So continuously, our planet is protected by Jupiter. This is one parameter for life to be sustained on a planet. Like that people have found, the scientists are saying that 200 plus parameters that needs to align all together. See, in the probability theory, if you go and read, I don't know, like, for all the things to come together at the same point is, is beyond comprehension. That the probability is very, very less. Okay, but God has made things to be possible that all these things has come together and fallen in place. In 1994, there was a comet called Shoe Levy 9. Shoemaker Levy, that's one of the scientists who has identified the comet and then he, his name was kept. Shoemaker Levy, you just go to the previous uh, first one. So, when the Shoemaker Levy hit one of the fragments of that Shoemaker Levy comet, there are many fragments, many rocks. In one of the fragments, when it hit, it created a hole in the southern part of Jupiter of the size of Earth. One hole was created by the Shoemaker Levy of the size of Earth. One hole. So, Earth can be fitted in that hole. If that comet had hit our planet, what would have happened? Life is gone. You just go and read about that. In 1994 it happened. So, the way God has designed this whole thing, people might say it's all out of chance. That's absolutely ridiculous. When somebody says that it's all happening by chance, and we're all living here by chance. Right? God has perfectly placed us in a, in a way that life can continue to go, continue to live, thrive, continue to prosper, right? So this, is, this one thing itself is amazing, the way that continuously Jupiter and the other planet Saturn, which is above, beyond that, it's all attracting all the debris so that our life on Earth is protected from destruction. Right? So, Bible says in Nehemiah 9.6, can, can you read Nehemiah 9.6? It says, You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. Right? And in Psalm 104.5 he says, You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. If that orbit is taken away by a bombardment of uh, something, then it will be taken away from the foundation. It has to be gone away from the solar system and we are gone completely. So, when Bible says that God has created heavens and the earth, we might just read, oh, okay, God created heavens and the earth. But when we go into the details of how he has fashioned all these things, when he, when he said, let there be light, let, and when he said, let the living things be formed on the earth, how he told this, when we go into each detail, just thinking of God created heavens and the earth alone, when we go into detail, how he created, how he is protecting it, we, we are mind boggled by the way that these things are happening. But when we go into other details, like how life is created on the earth, how the DNA molecules are created, which is making us a unique, uh, print for a person which, which is not found in any, anybody else. 
right? So when we go into the detail, we can we can understand that whatever God is saying in the Word of God is true. If the detail that in which the God has created this heavens, heavens and the earth is true. Right? If this detail is true and God is continuously protecting us, then we need to believe the word of God that it is the Lord who created everything in this universe, the visible and the invisible, like Paul says in Hebrews, that visible, invisible things are not just made on its own, but it was created by the word of the Lord. Right? So we need to, if we believe that God has is been protecting us so that the earth is not removed from this axis, removed from this orbit, and we are having life on the earth continuously by more than 200 plus parameters that whatever scientists has found, but we don't know how many else, uh, how many more things are yet to be found. Right? If that is true, then what our Bible says is true, that He is the one who fashioned and created or, or, or created the heavens and the earth, the, all the all the galaxies and all the things when the Bible says it is true, it is true. Right? And if that is true, then it is God who has created living things on this earth. Living things on this earth. And if that is true, God is the one who created human beings in his own image. Amen. And if that is true, then when God says, when man is created in his own image, he fell because of sin and rebelliousness. That is also true. Right? And if that is true, God had a plan of salvation for humankind through Jesus Christ. It's true. Right? And if that is true, when the Bible says Jesus came and died on the cross, it's true. And why he has to die on the cross? Bible says that so that we will have eternal life, we will not go into eternal condemnation. That is true. Right? You have to think in that way that when Bible says something is true, then I need to think everything is true. It's not a joke. I can play with, okay, what is comfortable for me, I will take that and I will leave all other things. And when, when God says that What we are seeing is temporal. God says, even though it is being protected all these years, but God says, Jesus says that in, if you read um, in Luke 21:33, Luke 21:33, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Which means that one day this heaven and earth will be gone. That is also true. And. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to come back and he's going to set his kingdom on the earth. That is also true. So, just think of one parameter that when we are all stuck about the small earth and there are so many things that are bigger about earth and it is working so perfectly and is protecting us, just you, you change your perspective from our day to day Oh, I go to office, I do this, I do. There are so many things that are happening. Our life and mindset is like revolving around a small circle. Oh, I need to do this? Okay. God is saying, hey, just, just put your focus a little bit higher. I am doing so many things. So many things for you. Just put your things and your perspective in a different realm. Let your mind not be, get stuck with your job, your life, your wife, your, your, your kids. And do so many things. Set your mind on bigger things. And God says that, put your mindset on bigger and eternal things. That is also true. Then, if God is doing all these things and because of which the world is protected, then when Jesus says, when he, when he keeps saying the same thing again and again in many places and his apostles are also saying again and again, saying, put your heart on eternal things, that is also true. That is also we need to take it to the 
coded importance that we cannot just say, okay, no, that, that doesn't make sense for me, no. Right, so what I want to build on today is let's not be, let our mind, because mind, our mind becomes the world that we live in. When our mind is thinking of bigger things that God has kept, that's when even our mind will start thinking about bigger things of God. But when our mind is always stuck on small things, that, that, that's what will our world will be. It will not be going beyond that world. Right? So, what I want to focus on today is, when God has said something and it has happened and is being protected to the precision, that the way that God has been protecting us, then we also need to give heed to the life in which that God is wanting us to live on this earth as well. That is also very, very important. When we give importance to God's word that when he is protecting this world, then we also need to give heed to the word that he is having a bigger plan for our lives. And he wanted us to focus on the things that God wanted us to focus on. Amen. So, first thing, um, I want to focus on is the eternal glory that God has planned for our lives. Right? Um, let's read <coughs> Matthew 6, 19-21. Who will be made for a good Hanam who will be for a good? Hallelujah. So, God is saying that our heart and mind can get stuck on the things of the earth continuously when, when we are not choosing to do the things that God has asked us to do, what, what he is saying is, our heart and mind always can think of small things, like the way that we are thinking of our daily life, right? Our daily life is like, I need to go to job, I need to do this. And then we never have a bigger perspective of how this world is being protected by God. And there are so many parameters that are there in which that God is blessing this earth and, the, and his plan is much, much bigger. In the same way, God is saying, if you are continuously focused on one side of the life, which is needed, I'm not saying that we, can, we, we don't need to do a job, it's all needed. But what happens is, when all the time our life and our mind and our heart is set on that alone, and not on the things of God, what happens? That is where our mind will always be. And Jesus says that, you store treasure for yourselves for a, a bigger place and when you are doing something on this earth, while you are working, while you are doing all these things, you also put your heart and mind into eternal things of God. Because it is something like this, when, you are, when, we, are child, when we are children, we might be so focused on, like when our parents keep saying that, hey, work, uh, study, that's how you will, you will prosper when you are growing old, right? At that time, it will be very difficult for us to hear, like why my parents are staying, saying always study, study, do things properly, right? And we are focused more on playing, hanging out with friends, and things like that, right? Like that God is saying to us, so, but when the children obeys the parents, what happens when they're growing old? Yes, I have studied, now I can get a job. I have done these things, I have disciplined these things in my, life, in my life, so I can be prosperous when I am growing old. Right? In the same way, when Jesus is saying that, hey, while we are so much occupied with the things of this world, God is also saying, invest something for your eternal life as well. 
Like our children who are not focused on their life and they were always playing and we keep pushing them to do the right thing for their benefit for when they are growing old. The same way Jesus is saying, while you are focused on the temporary things of this earth, focus also on the eternal things of God. That is where when you are, when we are going to be there, it will be of a greater reward there than right now. That's why what Jesus said, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys when, and when thieves do not break in and steal. Right? So, while we are focused on the temporary things of this life, God is saying, don't be stuck on that alone. Focus on eternal things as well. And if, if a child did not do that, always playing, and did not study, did not do anything that the parents told or the teachers told. What would have happened to the child when it is growing old? Then that person will struggle when they are coming up in life, when they are growing old. In the same way God is saying, hey, don't be stuck on this alone. Focus on eternal things so that when you are going to be with me, you are not going to suffer. You are not going to be found empty handed. It is like he is our parent and he is instructing us right now. While you are on this earth, do things, focus on the things of God. Don't be stuck on one side of the things alone. Amen. John, um, uh, John 14, 1 to 3.
beyond uh, uh, the cyber towers, nothing is there in this place. Nothing. Right? Everything are changed in 10 years. Right? In the same way, God is saying, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to change everything and I'm going to bring everything new. Okay. So when we are seeing from God's perspective, our, when, when we think that the life, when we hold on to the life, that this is what this life is all about, again God is saying, no, this life is temporal. Don't be too much worried, too much carried away by this alone. There are bigger things I have in plan for you. Amen. So two things we see in this place, in this verse itself. Okay. Um, okay. So now, during this time, what God wanted us to do? During the life that is that we are living on this earth, what God wanted us to do? Right? The first thing that we need to be focused on is what He has planned for our lives. How do we know about what He has planned for our lives? Yes, we need to work. If God has called us to work, we have to do that thing excellently. Through the things that we are doing in our own workplace, it is not that God has called everybody to become a missionary. Everybody has to be going and doing the things. Everybody has to start a church. No. There are, there are stages in life God has appointed us to do certain things. Like a child when it is growing. When the child is born, it doesn't take milk. That is important for the child. When the child is walking, it needs some training on the father or mother helping the child to grow. Right? And after that it has to go to school. That is the, that is the calling of the child at that point of life. Then the child has to obey parents and honor elders and then study well. So there are stages in which a child goes through. The same way, even in our life, when God has called us to do certain things in this stage of my life, I need to be faithful in doing that. It is not that suddenly God will make something big. I need to achieve that. So God will suddenly bring things to pass. No, I have to pass the test that is there in my life, in every stage of my life. If in, during this time of my life, I need to be focused on, say, job. I need to find a job. I need to ensure that I'm not going to be a burden for my parents or anybody. Go and do that. That is your calling. Focus on that. But don't be focused on that alone for the entire life. Right? And then when you got a job, God may call you, Son, I wanted you to serve in the church. Go and do that. Then do that faithfully. And once that is done, God might say, after a few years that you've been faithful in doing that, God might say, okay, this is what I'm asking you to do. Go and evangelize people. Go and start a church. Go and do it. So every stage of your life, God has a plan and we need to fulfill it. And that is the one which will take you to the final destination of what God has planned for you in eternity. If you are missing the first few stages, suddenly that person will not become a collector. Right? A person has to study, be faithful, go and write the exam, all those things are done, only then the person becomes a collector. Right? Suddenly, oh, I, this is a stage for me to become a collector means I have not studied anything, I have not done anything, suddenly we will not become like that. So be faithful in every stage of your life. Today, if God has gone and introspect your life, what is God calling me to do? For my personal life and also for my spiritual life, what God is calling me to do? Let me focus on that. And then let me, in all these stages, let me look into things from the eternal perspective. That what God wanted me to do and how this is going to affect my eternal life. Amen. So, um, Hebrew 12, 2 and 3.
Hebrew, Hebrew stool, uh, Hebrew skull, two and three. Yeah. <clears throat> Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished this race we are in. Study how he did it because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. Amazing verse. It says, what it says? He never lost sight of where he was headed. That's but did Jesus suddenly jump into the cross? Oh, let me die. Nobody in the picture suddenly died on the cross. No. He was born. Bible says that he was he found favor in the eyes of men and eyes of God. He was growing, he was waiting for the time of his ministry, and then he was tempted. Right? And he passed the test. And then he ministered to people, he healed the people, he saved the lost, and then he died on the cross at last. But what it says, he never lost sight where he was headed. Throughout the life of Jesus, it was, I know where I'm going, I need to finish this. I know where I'm going, I need to finish this in my life. I know where I'm headed. I need to finish this properly in my life. See, that is how, for example, if you are, if you are, if you are preparing for a, an exam or a competition, you set your focus on that and then you prepare now on, right? It is not like suddenly I will jump up in that competition and then I will, no. You set your focus on that and then every stage of your life you prepare for it. Say one of the toughest competition, you prepare for it. Every stage. In the same way, God is saying that there is a final thing that I am going to have which is my life with God. And that's where my focus and sight is. So I am going to be preparing for that every stage of my life. In this stage, if I have to study, yes, I have to study. In this stage, I have to get a job, yes, I have to get a job. But my focus is where? On internal things. I hope you are understanding this. This is how our life has to be. That when we are not loosed, losing the focus of what God has given to us, then every stage of preparation will be aligned to that destination. Jesus is very perfect in doing that. He knows that he has to die for the people on this world. He has to die on the cross. So he was prepared through every stage of his life and went See, he also came as a human being. He was not like suddenly in a, a different. I am sorry. He he was he was born in in a mother's womb, and he was going through every trials and temptations and emotions that we all went through. But the way he prepared for that day was every day he's having a relationship with God. Every day he's he's telling his disciples, "Hey, I'm going to die on the cross." He's mentally preparing himself. And there's a verse in the Old Testament. It says that. He, when he was in the final stages before going to the cross, he set his head like a flint stone towards Jerusalem. Basically, a flint stone is a very, very tough stone. Okay? And it cannot be broken. So he has set his mind in such a way that I am not going to be shaken. I am going to go and finish this thing. Such brutally focused that I am going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to die on the cross for the salvation of the human being and that's where my focus is. So he was preparing the entire life of 33 years for the final thing of dying on the cross and to be with God. But does that mean that he did not study the scriptures? 
Does that mean that he was not tempted? Does that mean that he did not he did not do the job properly when he was uh, uh, called to uh, serve people? He was excellent in everything before the final day. In the same way, even we ourselves also we have to be excellent in every stage of our life, fulfill the purpose of God, setting on what? Setting our focus on Christ, setting on what? What does he? What does he say? That he never lost sight of where he was headed. So setting our focus on eternal things of God. Today we wonder how the missionaries are able to go and serve people. It's, it's an amazing thing that how missionaries that they have such a focus to go to an unknown place, no relationship with that people, going and learning their languages, and at least they are able to achieve. How will they do that? If missionaries are not coming into this land, we are all lost. We are all been snake catchers only. We would have been snake catching snakes. Right? That was our forefathers' jobs. Right? If they had not come and given education and then given medicine and all the serving that they did not do, but they did it. How did they do? They, like Jesus, they never lost sight of where they were headed. They were like brutally focused on what they have to achieve, what God has called them to do. And they achieved it. When Jesus said, going into all the world and preach the gospel and heal the sick. Right? They did it. So, what I'm trying to say here is, there is a life that is given to us as well. Like the missionaries, there is a life that is given to us as well. It might not be a missionary job. Right? If we are called to be missionaries, let's go and do the missionary work. But there is a calling that we have in our lives that we are supposed to fulfill in each stage, setting our sight, that we don't lose sight on where we are heading. If that is not happening, right, we will be, we will be doing so many things. As a human being, we can do so many things in this world. There are many people doing that. But God is saying, you don't be like that. You focus on the things that I have called you to do, and then this stage of your life, what is supposed to be done, do it. That's when you will reach where I'm calling you at last. So, if there are temporary trials that you're going through in life, don't be shaken. Your, your focus is upon something ahead of you all the time. Many times what happens is, there is a stage in, the, in our life we come to and then we are shaken terribly like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do, I don't know. No, that's the focus. Focus on Christ. Focus on Jesus. And then He will lead you. Many, many times, you just take our own life. There is a... There is a state that comes, and then we are so shaken, we don't know what to do. Where we are heading. But Jesus says, don't be shaken on all those things. Trust me, set your focus on where you are headed, which is life with me, and then trust me, and then I will lead you. Right? So, um, Paul had the same temptations. If you read, um, Philippians 3, 12, 13, and 14. Philippians 3, saying that I have this all together, that I have made it, but I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong, by no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I have got my eye on the goal, where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I am off and running and I am not turning back. This is an amazing question, I think yes, it's amazing explaining this, right? So we think that Paul is an expert. Oh, he you know he has figured it out all. He's an expert in doing. No, he's saying that hey, I'm also learning. 
I am also going through trials. I am also going through tribulations. But what is he saying? No, friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal. What is the goal? His goal was that to take all the souls that comes on his way and bring it to Christ. That was his goal. And and fulfill the planning and the plan and the purpose of God for his life. That was his goal. So we need to take encouragement from from the from our uh, from the forerunners. That like I thought they figured it out all, but but they also struggled. Then my struggle on this earth is not something that I am the only one going through. But what they did set their focus on Christ set their focus on the goal that was there given to them and then they pursued it they did not got stuck in a journey and then they turned back that's what he's saying right i am off and running i'm not turning back i'm going ahead that's it i'm not worried about these things this is this life on this earth is not all i am set my focus on christ and i'm moving towards it and all these things that is coming on my way is all the things that Enabling me to reach that goal. That's it. But I'm not going to be stuck on saying that this is what my life is all about. I'm going to be stuck on that alone. No. I'm going to go towards the goal that God has set for me. Amen. So, the, the basic things that I wanted to cover, I'll, I'll not uh, go further on this, but the first thing that we started with, how when we are thinking of life on this planet, we did not have an eternal perspective of how God has created these things. Once we understand that, we know that the life on this earth is so precious. God has designed it so marvelously and is protecting us every day in our life. And, and when we get that perspective, we will be able to appreciate that, wow, it is the Lord who created this. Right? In the same way, when we get that understanding, we come to a conviction and truth that there is something bigger than the things that I'm seeing right now. There, there is something much, much bigger, much, much greater than the things that I'm seeing right now. That's what Bible says. Right? So if that is what is bigger, that is what is real thing, then let me set my mind on that. Not on the things every day, oh, I need to face my manager, I need to do this. Stuck on that. Right? He says that see from eternal perspective, the things that is on this earth is very temporary. And run towards it. At last, that is what matters. At last, that is what is going to stand forever and ever. We're so much caught up in this uh, anxiousness and trials and temptations and 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 competition and so many things that we think that this is what his life is all about. But God says, set your focus on that. That's what is the real thing. Amen. So, what I want to bring in today is this, that like Jesus, like Paul, like all the other apostles and missionaries, when they had set their mind on the things of God, when they set their mind on the goal that God has kept for them, that is what was driving them. That life for today was driven by the goal that is ahead of them. The life for today, my focus, my planning, my joy, my peace, everything was based on what is finally I'm going to achieve. And let our life also be like that. Let us not get caught up in a small temporary mindset of no, absolutely not knowing anything. What God has planned. Amen. So when we know that this is what his life is all about, what happens is, like Jesus, uh, 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 like the Bible says, a righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is the kingdom of God. If, if we don't have peace and joy today, then, then you are not in the kingdom. 
Why we are not having peace and joy today? Because, oh, tomorrow I need to go and face my manager, I need to give the support, I need to... Our mind is, our world is revolving around this only. When the peace and joy, when it comes, when we know that this is temporary, yes, I need to do things, but I'm my, my focus and my energy is all not going to be all on this alone. I have something greater. I have something greater coming on my way. When we think from that angle, from that perspective, then we will have peace and joy. Come on, like, this is not temporary. It's okay, I will do that and I will move on. The, small, the problem itself becomes so small. Right? When you think in that manner, are what? If I don't give, I'll do my best. If I am not able to do it, it's okay. What is beauty? I'm not asking you to be evading your responsibilities, but don't get into a mindset of this is what I'm called to do in my life. No. You are called to do greater things. God has said greater things in life and move towards that. Right? So always think your life in eternal perspective. Always think like there's so much bigger things that is ahead of us. Bible says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what God has prepared for those who love Him. And when we hear that verse itself, joy should bubble and something greater that is there ahead of, uh, ahead of me. That day we were discussing in Bible study that somebody was saying that the heaven would be not like we will be sitting in a cloud night and playing a harp. Right? It will be a most busiest place where we will have so many things to do. Not out of frustration and uh, disappointments that oh I need to do this. No. It will be all full of joy and hope and peace. And what we have done on this earth, the level of maturity, the level of dependence, the level of um, my trust has been on God, that much level of glory I will have in eternal life. If our life is always about small things which is temporary on this earth, that's how our life will be also be on the eternity. That it will be of a small thing. It will not be of much bigger thing at all. But like the way Paul did, like the way Jesus did, that they were setting their mind on eternal things and they were running the race that was prepared for them and they lived that completely, then even the life that we are going to live with God will be amazing, will be fruitful, will be so joyful and we would never think that when the life on this earth is absolutely very, very small and I'm not much worried about it. And that kind of a perspective we should have even, even here on the earth. Amen. So, set your mind on eternal things. Do the things that is supposed to be done today in this stage of your life. Be faithful in it. You've been asked to work, be faithful. But don't think that this is what my life is all about. Set your mind on eternal things. And then you will run the race. And then finish the course. And then you will see a greater reward for your own life. Amen. And that's the pattern in which all the saints of God lived on this earth. Before they departed to Christ. Before they departed from this earth. Amen. And when and we also need to follow the same pattern. If we don't follow, then we will we will think that okay, my life is like this. Oh, what will I do? Always worried, always complaining. Right? So always check whether your life is filled with righteousness, peace, and joy. If that is not there, then you think that you are something missing terribly on that stage of life. Always it has to be in this. That whether the righteousness, peace and joy is continuously there in this part of my life or not. Amen. So, let's all stand up.
is not laying any ill feeling on you. God is saying, be at rest. The things that I have called you to do in this stage of your life, only you can do it. And do it with, without murmuring, grumbling, depending on me. You set your focus and mind on me, the eternal things.
permission for the things that is ahead of us, O oh God. The eternal things of God. And Father, we pray that, that as a church, that we will not be distracted from the things that you have planned for our lives. At last, we have to stand before you and give an account of our lives. We cannot say, oh, I got distracted. No. Help us to have that eternal perspective in our lives all the time. Not being pulled up, ripped apart from the journey that is kept ahead of us. Help us, Lord, to set our hearts and minds upon you. And every, every influence of the world to pull us away from the plan and purpose of God. Let it be removed from our lives in Jesus' name. That Lord, we are set on a mission. And even as individuals, we are set on a mission that you kept for us. Help us, Lord. Help us to stay on course. Stay on course. Stay on course on the journey. And in every milestone that we reach towards the journey, Father, help us to praise and worship you. Ensure that are we moving towards the target, or are we distracted, more moved away from plans and purposes of God? Every distractions in our lives will be removed. And Lord, let our ways be corrected by you, as your word says, "My son, this is the way you walk in it. Not move left or right." Set our lives, set our course, set our journey moving towards you, Father. Help us always to have a bigger picture in our minds and hearts, O God. The temporary things, the momentary things, let it not become permanent in our hearts and minds. Even if there is a failure or a setback, let that not be our focus all the time. Help us to rise up and move on in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. 